These last few weeks have been really tough. It was a Monday afternoon. I was working in the shed and I started getting a pain in my stomach. Well, I'd been wearing this blue dress all day. It was a very beautiful blue dress. But I thought, okay, maybe I'm getting a little bit chunky here. I thought it's possibly just, I've been wearing it all day. Possibly it's just been pulling on my stomach. And maybe that's, um, maybe I just shouldn't wear this dress or I need to um, lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> I carried on working for another few hours. I thought, oh, this is very unpleasant. I went and changed into my pyjamas because they're super comfortable sporting them now <laughs> me and Betty anyway it didn't help I just thought I'm just gonna go to bed I'm just gonna go and sleep this off and I'm sure by the morning I'll feel absolutely fine but it got to about 10 o'clock at night and I still wasn't asleep the pain was getting worse at this stage I was thinking this isn't normal this isn't a cramp you know when you get a stomach ache and you get a cramp and it comes and goes in waves it wasn't anything like that it was a constant pain it had been going on for seven hours at this stage maz just asked me to take her to the hospital she knew something was really wrong every little bump in the road i really felt it it just was horrible ben was being as careful as he could not to um not to go too fast over bumps so he was lovely he's always lovely we got to the hospital. They don't allow visitors in at this particular hospital that I went to. So I had to go in on my own. And at this stage, I was getting more poorly. Ben came home. I went for a CT scan. There's a little bit of a funny story to this. It must have been about two o'clock in the morning. And the nurse gave me my third lot of anti-sickness medication and it was supposed to be some kind of pain relief but she said it will make you very drowsy i took it and i was beginning to feel the drowsiness i was drifting off to sleep and all of these crazy alice in wonderland images were coming into my head but i could see them but not the pleasant ones they were really spinny and i did not like it at all it was real freaky stuff I had to open my eyes. I couldn't, I couldn't let myself fall asleep because it was just so awful. And then the nurse kept looking at my monitors from the office and I was beginning to get a bit paranoid. So I got woken up at around about 2 a.m. with Maz texting me some really weird stuff. She was saying stuff like, I don't feel safe. The nurse is drugging me to make her life a little bit easier and keep me quiet. She was completely paranoid that this nurse was up to no good. And Ben just said, yes, yeah, you have been drugged by the nurses. It's absolutely fine. That's what they do. <laughs> so the doctor came in, I think it was about five o'clock in the morning and said to me, we finally got your CT results through. Your small intestine has twisted. You need to get surgery pretty quickly. And he said, we're gonna have to prep you for surgery. We're going to stick a tube up your nose into your stomach. And then we're gonna get an ambulance to transport you to the hospital, another hospital for surgery. Once I found out that mum was in hospital, I realized that she must have been very sick. I was a bit worried at first. I realized, okay, I've got to get this together. And then I just took over the house and made sure everything was done and there was nothing for mum and dad to worry about. When there's a problem, Lily really flies into, um, I guess like a nurturing, a mothering role. Don't get me wrong, she doesn't have to. We, we don't expect that of our children, but she's, it's just how she naturally is couldn't really have a better daughter than Lily because she is just, just awesome. And having Lily by my side made everything so much easier. I knew that I could go to the hospital and everything at home was going to be running really well. It's such a relief in these times to have a daughter like that. I've got to say, having that tube inserted was probably one of the most horrible experiences and I'm absolutely traumatised by it. Not only did it look flipping awful, but it was really horrible and I couldn't stop gagging. The nurses, um, including the one who I thought was trying to drug me earlier on in the morning, were very sweet to me and very kind. Um, oh my God, that's gonna make me teary. Um, but it was, oh, 
just the worst experience. Anyone who's had it will know it's disgusting. Now, I know some of you who are on Instagram, you saw this and um, I got a lot of questions asking if I'd had a nose job. I did not have a nose job in hospital. I have actually had that done previously, but that's a whole nother story. On this occasion, no nose job. <laughs> Maz got taken by ambulance early in the morning to SKU Hospital. It's an absolutely fantastic hospital here on the Sunshine Coast. Um, I went into this first ward and it's like a holding ward, I guess, for arrivals. So the wardies collected me, took me to the ward that I needed to go for my surgery. A doctor from the surgical team came in, he said he'd looked at the CT scan and that it wasn't just one twist, it was two. It's very unusual apparently, so usually it's something that happens if you've had a previous abdominal surgery or a C-section. I've never had anything. It's really still a mystery as to how it happened. I had no choice, I had to have surgery and luckily they were saying they were going to do, uh, do keyhole surgery but if there was any bruising in, internally or any damage, then obviously they would need to do a, a full surgery. In my preparation for surgery, the nurse presented me with my attire for the surgery, which consisted of a beautiful lilac gown, some white stockings with um, orange socks, like grippy socks, you know, like you'd go to a trampoline place with. The final piece to this outfit was net knickers, um, which to be honest, I wasn't expecting lingerie, but <laughs> God, they were rank. <laughs> they were absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Not long after that, they took me for surgery. I can't speak highly enough about how it was. Everybody was so kind, so professional. Can't even praise them enough because I felt so comfortable despite feeling like rubbish. I was so well looked after and I didn't stress at all. It was just, this is what's gonna happen. I'll be very lucky if, um, if I only have keyhole surgery and that's fine. It is what it is. So I went in, had the surgery, and then woke up in recovery, and I was like, okay, so what's happened? Is it bad? I'm so grateful they told me everything went very well. It was just twisted. There were no further complications. We've un untwisted you, and it's only been keyhole surgery. They called Ben, let him know that I was okay. And the great thing about it is that the second hospital I went to allowed visitors. I was accommodated with a bedroom to myself and it had an ensuite. It was a lovely bedroom with television, even though I didn't watch it. But the, the main thing for me is a private bathroom. I hate sharing bathrooms, it just grosses me out. Post-op wise, I was on hourly observations and that consisted of temperature, blood pressure, and all the normal, all the normal observations that you get in hospital. And I had my cannula uh, with my IV fluids, which was wonderful. My paracetamol through there, brilliant. Anyway. Kept, kept me feeling good. And then I began to be able to walk up and down the corridors within a few days. That was my outing from my bedroom. But to be honest, I was I just needed to sleep. I was just catching up on a lot of sleep and not wanting to move too much because obviously stomach surgery is, it's not nice, is it? It's, there's one more part to this story, which is I'm very calm. I don't overreact. And I was on a, I was on a fluid diet for from after the surgery, which was on Tuesday, till I think Thursday night, and I was only allowed drinks um, and jelly. <sighs> Never want to see jelly again. But on the Thursday night, I was told I could have soup with my diet now. I was, I was allowed, you know, that little bit of extra texture. So I had a beautiful soup, but then in the morning, they didn't give me soup for breakfast. They presented me with more jelly. I, ju I just didn't want it. When it came to lunchtime, they brought me more liquid and I, I, I said, oh no, I'm allowed soup now. 
And they said, oh, no, we don't. We only do soup in the evening, not at lunchtime. And at this point, I was so desperate for food that I just cried. <laughs> I still had my nose cheap. So I looked like this absolute monster and I just cried. Nothing had broken me. Throughout the pain, throughout the nose tube, throughout the surgery, everything. I was so, so calm. The thing that broke me was not being given food, like a proper meal by Friday. <laughs> I just couldn't stop crying. And the nurse came in and she was so sweet. At that point, they whipped out the nose tube and gave me a meal and it was the best salad I've ever had. It was so delightful. I was so grateful. That was my only wobble. A girl's got to eat. I can honestly say the food that I was given once I was allowed to eat was really delicious. And then I was allowed home on the Saturday evening. She just wanted to get back to everything like normal, but she couldn't. So we forced her into having a good rest. It's been just over two weeks since my surgery. I am obviously still taking it easy, but I feel like I'm on the ball mentally again. Throughout all of this, we can honestly say that the standard of healthcare where we live in Queensland is exceptional. The surgery that I had and the care that I had was actually on the public system. So private a lot of people have private health uh, private health insurance we don't however we have um, in the past paid for private medical care um, this occasion we didn't because it was an emergency situation and it was dealt with very quickly um, but in the past Ben had a um, tonsillectomy which we paid for privately because we wanted it to be something that happened straight away but on this occasion we used public health care and honestly I don't think you could beat the service that we received I'm so grateful for that to live in Australia you know a country that's not where I've come from and to be treated in such an exceptional way, I feel very lucky. One thing about Queensland I know that is different to some of the other states is that we have free ambulances. I know that in some areas you actually have to pay for ambulances. I thought we were very lucky with the NHS in England, but um, wow. I've seen situations in the UK where when necessary, when there's a real emergency, doctors and nurses, they come flying out of nowhere and you receive the most incredible care when you need it. I've seen that firsthand and so I, I in no way ever want to discredit the NHS because I think that the NHS staff are just the most incredible people. For anyone who doesn't know the NHS, that's the um, British healthcare system. What I think here is that the scene, they seem to have more resources and they're not so short on staff and the staff aren't treated so terribly as they are in the UK. And for that reason, it feels like there's more of them and it feels like they're not under the pump to that level. The team aren't better they're just better resourced. The care, I couldn't fault it. <laughs> Even when I told you the story of me thinking that the nurse was drugging me, that was just the drugs. <laughs> she truly was wonderful. <laughs> just want to clarify this. Actually, I don't know what it was, but I must find out what it was because I never ever want to have that again. <laughs>